You know when your camera gives you those weird color shifts like it's been drinking bad coffee? Well, Canon thinks they've got a cure. And no, it's not a firmware update. It's a whole new hardware design, buried deep in a brand new photoelectric conversion unit, which means a new sensor upgrade is likely coming in the next couple of years. Today, we're gonna break it down, problem, solution, and why this could be the next big thing to happen to your workflow since CF Express cards came out. And if you're serious about staying ahead of the latest camera curve, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. It's free, it takes a second, and it's really greatly appreciated. In Canon's patent application, JP 2025 105729, filed on December the 24th, 2023, and published July the 10th, 2025, Canon claims to provide an arrangement of a column circuit for suppressing image quality deterioration caused by a characteristic difference in each pixel column, a characteristic difference for each pixel row, color mixture, and power supply fluctuation. Translation, your camera sensor isn't perfect. This shouldn't be a surprise to any of us. Pixel columns and rows, well, they behave differently because of process variations, temperature changes, power supply resistance, and digital to analog interference. That's why sometimes you get noise creeping into the shadows or that ugly green magenta tint when you push your raw files a little bit too hard in post. Canon even admitted that prior designs weren't ideal. Patent document 2016-92791 Alpha put column circuits above and below the pixel array, which caused image quality deterioration due to interference of digital signal transmission with analog circuits. So yeah, this was never going to win the sensor of the year. Now here's where it gets good. Canon didn't just shuffle the components around. They re-engineered how the column circuits are physically placed. This thing essentially reads like an IKEA manual for engineers, but the details matter. So let's dive in with the figures and numerals. In figure four, we see source transistors, cast code transistors, and switch transistors for signal line 30 and 31, arranged adjacent to each other in the column direction. The center of gravity positions of each element can then be brought closer to each other, and the characteristics of the elements can be made uniform by reducing the process variation, the temperature difference, the power supply resistance, and all the like. So in English, by parking the similar transistors side by side, Canon makes sure every column gets the same response, less noise, cleaner shadows, and fewer hot pixels. What's really got me surprised though is that they didn't think of this to begin with. Well, the reason why is color bleed between columns, but apparently Canon fixed that too. Figure six shows the comparators, deliberately spaced apart. Canon goes further, stating that the comparators are separated from each other by alternately arranging the comparators and the current sources, so that comparator 60 and comparator 61 are not adjacent to each other. This prevents digital interference when the AD conversion spikes, and that's good news. So what is the end result? Well, no more weird green edges when you shoot fine details. But have you ever noticed how some columns smear when you're panning? Well, that's parasitic capacitance messing with you. And Canon's answer to that? Well, a stacked layer sensor. The photoelectric conversion unit as part of the sensor has a stack type configuration so that the length of the signal line and the parasitic capacitance are made uniform in each column. The patent explicitly states that the design helps suppress image quality deterioration and operational speed deterioration. And that's all due to that parasitic capacitance difference between the signal lines. Faster operation can, well, indirectly improve how the sensor handles high-speed scenes. Now this is clever. Canon literally rearranged the memory blocks to stabilize power fluctuations. A part of the second column circuit group is arranged between the first memory, and the second memory of the first column circuit group suppresses the power supply fluctuations when the output of the comparator changes. And the second memory of the first column circuit group suppresses the power fluctuations when the output of the comparator changes. Essentially, think of it as moving noisy neighbors to the end of the street. If only it was so easy. Now, cleaner power obviously means cleaner images. And this is the final thing that we need to know. Canon splits analog and digital processing across three stacked layers. An analog unit that handles an analog signal and a digital unit that handles a digital signal are separated from each other, 
preventing the digital signal transmission from interfering with the analog circuit. And that means no more banding caused by digital crosstalk when you crank the ISO up. And yes, we're talking to you, Canon EOS R5 Mark II. So at the end of the day, other than that little bit of a hint there, what does all this mean for you, the photographer or filmmaker? Well, cleaner colors and shadows. By reducing the column and row variation, what we get to do is push the raw files a little bit harder before that noise starts to creep in. And that's something we could see happen in the R5 Mark III because, well, they seem to have gone backward with the R5 Mark II, at least with high ISO wildlife photography. It also means improved operational speed. The stack design has many benefits, but in regards to this patent application, it helps suppress operational speed deterioration due to parasitic capacitance difference. And I just love that term. And it's the parasitic capacitance difference of the signal lines, which may also benefit high speed image capture, more reliable colors, and less color bleeding means cleaner skin tones and better chroma. If Canon implements this in their next R series bodies, we can expect more consistent files that require less correction in post, fewer hours fixing, and more hours shooting. The patent even teases its use of high speed gear. A moving object comprises the photoelectric conversion unit with a control unit configured to control movement of the moving object using a signal output by a photoelectric conversion unit. And yeah, that is a mouthful. I was just happy that I got through it without mumbling all the words. Expect this technology not just to be in cameras, but maybe, just maybe, Canon could license this to automotive and drone imaging as well. It's certainly a good pat to have. And I want to say thank you so much for supporting this channel, for watching this video to the very end. It's very much appreciated. Now, if I could just ask one more favor. Well, actually, two. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and punch that subscribe button. Click on it right there. It takes just two seconds and it means an awful lot to us. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you're in the United States and you're looking at purchasing any gear from Walmart, Amazon, b and or Adorama, then please go ahead and consider using our affiliate links down below. By using these links, you're helping us keep this channel sponsorship free. I'm not against sponsorships, but from the ones I've seen so far, they're annoying. And what they tend to do is turn videos like this into, well, promotional vehicles for advertisements, which that's not what I'm looking at doing. If I can find sponsorships that are of direct interest to you, well, that's something I'll consider. Anyhow, so thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you very much for those of you that have used my affiliate links in the past. It's very much appreciated. But now it's time to record my second video of the day. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you again soon.